on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guessman, coming to you on a Thursday, March 18th. LA Galaxy deep in the preseason now. Things are starting to happen. Victor Vasquez officially over the line. Greg Vanny talked a whole bunch about him. We're going to talk a whole bunch about him. Uh, we got some information on Efrain Alvarez. Season ticket members, we have information for you. Uh, Efrain Alvarez, Julian Araujo, Sebastian Legette, a lot of guys to talk to, even Sam Grantzler as well. So we've got a bunch to get to to help me do all that. He's back. Glad to have him back, too. The Hammer's here. How's it going, Hammer? It's going very well. I'm glad to be back. This is exciting. I'm back, uh, baby. We, you are back, and, and and I'm glad to have you back. We have, of course, been having some fun whenever we haven't been on this podcast as well, which I, I think most people know. I talked about it on Monday night, um, but you and I got the, had a very prestigious oh. honor. You should you should tell everybody what like fun, ridiculous stuff that that we got to do. Well, first of all, big shout out to to Larry Morgan, not on Twitter, and Sophie the Ken and Nicola before that. You know, when when they're on, it's always a pleasure just to be a listener. Uh, so big shout out to them. But on Sunday, we got to announce some Liga G action. So for all our esports heads out there and our uh, Liga G heads who have been uh, uh, up and around. Uh, the Galaxy Podcast World. You know, we got to be the broadcasters for the final, uh, a best of three series. It went all three games. We had some extra time games, two extra time games, lots of goals, lots of excitement, uh, and and we were talking, you know, texting back and forth, and and it seemed to be very well received, uh, you know, on Twitter, and we were getting a lot of good feedback uh, and in the chat. But but I think we found our new niche. We need to put this on, on the resume. I mean, we had so much fun, and I feel, I felt like we we're born to do this. That we found our calling. I was going to say, we should update our LinkedIn uh, information there. I think we could do, um, you know, we could do worse. We could do worse. You know, you you brought to my attention, and I saw it, Eric. Um, AEG liked the 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 post about Liga G and us hosting. So if AEG wants to write us a big check to be their esports arm of things, I, mean, we're, I, I think we're ready, right? I mean, we'd have to negotiate. But, of course. But, but, but of we, course. we'd but, be ready. But we're willing parties and uh, we're easy to negotiate with. So you're absolutely right. If AEG wants to make it official or the Galaxy, you know, shout out to them for hosting uh, on their Twitch channel. But again, we're, we're always happy to to get better equipment and support the show. So however we can negotiate that in our favor, I'd gladly, gladly take it. That's right. That's right. You know, the, all we need is a, a full bowl of green M&Ms. Um, <laughs> you, I, I think, you know, and some sparkly water, some sparkly water. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll, uh, what we'll go with, but no, it was a ton of fun. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, they got to see it. And, uh, we, as I, I will be honest, you know, most of the time we like to play this cool Eric, right? We like to say, Hey, you know, I don't, it was cool, but you know, we don't need, we, we want to be back. So if they, if they want us to be back, then we will basically, I've already said whatever game they have, we'll do. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I said, you know, whether that goes through marriages, um, whether that goes through kids, you know, missing kids, important events, we we're we are there and we're ready to call yeah. another game. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's just it's just so much fun. And I think part of it had to do with the games we got to go too, because, you know, we could have gotten a couple teams and uh, fortunately it was the teams that were in the final. But if we got if there was a different game. It might not have been as exciting, but the teams really laid it out there. The Beer Belly Boys and Rhino 96 FC, you know, shout out to them because they made the games exciting, really. So if the games are like that, 
we'll we'll do this all day long and it was just so much fun and and I was glad I'm glad that it was well received and the league is is gaining traction I I've, I've I've I haven't been too cool for school I I've I've been unashamed in my my support of uh, esports and FIFA leagues and things like that so uh, just to see it kind of grow how it's been it's been pretty awesome so uh, I I'm having a lot of fun I'm glad you had fun with it and you kind of you're starting to come around and see 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 it, the fun that can be I've I've always been I always knew it was something I always enjoyed it. We went to the EMLS event, um, which yeah. you know what? Let's talk about it because the EMLS yeah, event is is coming up. So if you are interested, and the Godfather obviously from from the LA Galaxy, it's his fourth time uh, in the EMLS Cup, um, and so there's 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 some excitement around that. And he's there. Uh, it starts on March twentieth. Um, so that's that's coming up, Eric. It's not very far away. It's this Saturday. Um, so. Uh, it, it's one of those things. If you want to watch it, you can watch it. Uh, the Godfather is there. He's in the quarterfinals going up against the Philadelphia Union. Um, so we'll see if maybe he can uh, ad advance a little bit farther this time. He's he's a great guy. We both met him. And uh, so hopefully if you're into EMLS, you can watch it on MLS's Twitch channel, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So um, just a quick plug for, for EMLS as well. Yeah, best of luck to the Godfather. You know, it goes with the name, the Godfather. He's been around a long time. Hasn't had the best of luck in EMLS events, but, uh, you know, he's kind of a traditionalist with the way he plays. But uh, I think, you know, you never know what could happen in, in any of these games. The Ethernet connection, who knows what happens? And, uh, <laughs> you know, the ball bounces your way. So I hope he does well. You know, anything LA Galaxy related, we're going to support our people. All right, and let's get to some uh, some other news before we really dive into what is going to be a very busy uh, show with a lot of information, a lot of things coming your way. But AFJA as well is is putting together and, and doing a, a really fun prize um, and raffle. Uh, you can actually win a community kit. So um, they put it out. You can Venmo $10 to at AFJA, AFJA 2018 to be entered in the Cosmos prize pack raffle. Um, that includes a chance at winning a community kit. So if you pay $10, Eric, $10, you could own a community kit. And even though the patches went sideways today, um, <laughs> even though... We'll which, get there. Well, yeah, I was going to say, it, that's... I don't even know. I, I, Let's I'm give AFJ their, okay. their, their time. That, that's fine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, support uh, Aftros, uh, of course, and, and Venmo um, $10 again to at, at uh, AFJA2018 to be entered into the Cosmos prize pack raffle. Um, so go do that. I know there's equipment sale, I believe, going coming up this weekend as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on yeah. around the Galaxy community. So um, we'd be we'd be honored if you went and, and donated some money and uh, and again, win a community kit. 10 bucks. You know, that's yeah. that's not a bad deal. I, I, having paid a lot more than that, I can tell you yeah. $10 would be a good deal. Ten, $10 is absolutely a steal for, for a Galaxy community kit. So, so shout out to that. And again, I know uh, we're an independent Galaxy uh, content creator, but it's also nice to see the Galaxy teaming up with a lot of these independent people like AFJA and League of G. They're, they're, they're merging those connections. So the lines are becoming a little bit blurrier in a good way. So with the equipment sale, they're having the AFJA raffle and that's kind of, sp it's a sponsored event and some of the proceeds go there. So to see everything coming together, uh, it's it's really great. Yeah, it's a so lot now, of fun. Now do we talk patches? Yeah, let's talk patches real quick. I don't even have any pictures because I I'm more I more or less I threw my phone against the window. Um, it was media day for the LA Galaxy today, which if you've been paying attention to social media, you've seen some of the media photos and some of the different things. And obviously, always doing creative stuff. I know Robert Mora and their group are always trying to get you know the the new look, the new the new sort of edge on things. Uh, there was it looked like a projected back, uh, yeah, a screen behind some of the players, and then they were projecting words. Over top of the, we saw Bondi or, or no it was I, I think I saw Derek Williams, um, yeah with the Irish flag yeah with the Irish flag back behind mm -hmm. him and, and there were words across like being projected onto him and they were taking a picture who knows what that all ends up looking like but it's fun to see some of that stuff but what we got to see is home jerseys we got to see some away jerseys too um, what did you see on the home jerseys Mister <laughs> Mister Hammer sir well well first of all once you know. We'll talk about going into the stadium and watching the games also, but a lot of the work that you see in these media day videos ends up being in hype videos and goal celebrations. So that's that's where you'll end up seeing the other side of this. Uh, but one of the takeaways from today is we I've missed almost all of the episodes with the patch variations, but we have uh, you know 
the the honey patch we have the mm-hmm. mls patch the, the you know no patch all these things going on and then today during media day on the left hand side where a, generally an mls patch would go there was a herbalife 24 logo which was featured during the mls's back tournament with dignity health on the other side so it's not unheard of to have the double sponsor patch but it's something that we we didn't know was going to be there before and there was the whole hullabaloo with getting the mls patch on there and what's going to be the authentic if it's not the authentic and so now if MLS store is shipping them with an MLS patch and the honey patch, uh, they're going to charge for the honey patch for $5 and the MLS patch to be added. So now do you charge an extra $5 for the Herbalife patch? Is that included? In- <laughs> it's just wheels within wheels uh, with all these kit variants. I, at, at first, I was a little bit kind of upset that, you know, we, we can't get a clear answer or, or a clear vision on what exactly an authentic is. But I've kind of leaned in into Team Chaos, all of the different variants and just going through and listing, we're going to have 20 different types of authentics uh, and, and they're each going to be unique in their own way. They're all, they're all going to be collector's items. They're not though. I mean, they, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I like your positive spin on it, right? And, and you're allowed to have that spin. That's perfectly acceptable answer. And I'm sure there's lots of people who are like you who are like really at this point, does it even matter yeah, anymore? I've given up really. I, and that's sort of where I'm getting, we're, yeah. we're, we're being pushed to the point of giving up. Are you telling me that the LA Galaxy didn't know that there was going to be patches on both sleeves whenever this... I mean, is that a... Herbalife just called up and they saw the honey patch and they were like, man, we Wait really got we got to get in on that patch deal. Could you just hook us up and then you could go ahead and do this? It just... I don't know. It feels short-sighted. It feels like there was no long-term plan for it because, you know, the answer very clearly could have been very simply as soon as there was the any sort of, you know, question about the MLS patch was, listen, there's not going to be an MLS patch because we're going to have sponsors on both sides, yeah. which at one point we were deducing from that. We were saying, yeah. oh, well, there's probably going to be patches on both sides. That's probably why it wasn't. So you could have, you could have just made that the answer. And mm-hmm. then everybody would have been, oh, okay, that's the answer. We're done with this. Thanks for coming. Good. Do- I mean, that, it would have been an answer and we're done. I mean, yeah. you know, part of me, and, and I haven't checked in with the LA Galaxy, so if this is incorrect, I apologize for, for not checking in, but I kind of got sick of checking in to find out about all the different things. But yeah. we nobody reached out to me to tell me that that was the case, and I've been trying to follow this as much as possible. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's frustrating more than yeah. anything, and and I think I, I think as a, as a fan or anything else, there's going to be an authentic, Eric. It's yeah. going to be what it is on the field, and that's going to be it. And that's going to be by which all authentic. You you hunt jerseys sometimes. Yeah, I I hunt I hunt too. What yeah, do we do I like whenever window shop? Yeah, what do you do whenever you find a jersey that you you sort of want to verify? You go online, you look for pictures that are going to match yep. it up. Can yeah, you, you look am- for the game can, worn. Can you imagine trying to match up what we have <laughs> seen this season? Yeah, it's you're definitely not going to be able. The only authentics really are going to be the player issues, which they sell either at auction or that are given away. Right. That's really going to be the only true authentics that you'll be able to get. But I just want to give you kudos for kind of thumping the <laughs> the jersey wagon, just because I, I since I haven't been on to talk about it, we'll just recap it as my my chance here. Uh, I think the the galaxy didn't get in front of it and didn't anticipate that this mattered to fans. But there are a lot of fans that this matters to. A lot. Uh, I mean, I, I'm one of them, and and uh, I'm I'm one who pref- likes the, the aesthetics and I like uniforms. Uh, but this is something that's important, and maybe it's silly for a lot of people. And when you're an organization, you're worried about playing games and signing players. Uh, the jerseys aren't going to be at the top of your list, but at the same time, there are people that this is important to, and to not validate it and not come out in front and say, we understand that, you know, people were expecting this and they didn't get it. Here's what the resolution is, but instead they're going to be a surrogate, which is you, because you're asking the questions and that's how the information is getting out there when it's really not, I mean, it's, it's, it's our job in a way to report on what's going on in the, the galaxy. That's why we have listeners and that's why things happen. But at the same time, it's not, it's not corner of the galaxy's job to relay information about what the galaxy is going to be doing with the jerseys. The, the fact that no one is coming out in front and making a statement or they're not issuing a statement or, uh, you know, if people have questions, it's every single person has to have a different email conversation with a team LA store representative. And it's almost like, well, you can avoid this by just saying, or aware of the issue, or if you if you have jersey issues, here's a website where you go to 
to log in. I mean, there, there are things that mistakes are fixable. And, you know, it just seems like they, they don't want to fix this one. And it's almost, and now with the second patch, it's like they're right. just throwing their hands in the air. And it's like, you get what you get. Just don't ask us any questions. It is what, you know, don't don't worry about it. Look over here. We have games going on, different things. It's, uh, we've reached the frustration point. And it's, it's really too bad. So it's a missed opportunity. And, and it's unfortunate for the fans who this is important to, uh, because it feels like they're, what they're interested in and part of what, defines them and brings them close to the club isn't being validated by the club either. So that, that's really unfortunate. Uh, I just, I mean, they could, they could have been right. They were right the whole time not to have they could have, the yeah. MLS patch on there. Right. I mean, th yeah. that, that was the whole thing. It just almost, I don't know. Anyway, but, but, <laughs> but then you had conversations with people who said the MLS patch is coming and right. then now the MLS patch is not. So yeah, it's, you know what? And maybe they didn't know. Uh, you know what? I'm sure I'm just lying to everybody because I have nothing better to do. I told you about the MLS patch, and I'm sure it was I. You know, I made it up because I have. Uh, I, it's just some sort of sick, de weird thing that, that I'm doing. But anyway, if I if I get any information, um, which I don't have any updated information, um, and I expected some resolutions to be public by now. Quite honestly, the only resolutions that have been talked about have been me talking about the resolutions they told yeah. me were coming out. So. Um, I'm hopeful that those resolutions eventually come out. I know that one of those resolutions revolves around Julian Araujo, and I know that he is currently down in Guadalajara um, uh, with the uh, with the Olympic uh, qualifying team. And so that's probably one of the reasons that hasn't been put up. Perfectly understandable. I get it. But it's still, it would be nice. I got two or three direct messages right now, um, or today, talking about Julian Araujo 22 kits. Okay. Um, and so I'm still getting them. So I'm I'm still answering and I'm still giving yeah. the information that I that yeah. I really shared with everybody. So and, yeah. It, and, and that's the other thing I doesn't want to I don't want to come across like sour grapes or like You um, are. You're sour but, grapes. But Eric. at the same time, I feel like I'm a pretty good representative of what the fan base is. That's part of why I'm here. And you know, if I can be the voice for the of the fans and speak on their behalf, uh, I'm happy to do that. And I just I just want to to throw that out there. Okay. By the way, I, I know for people listening on the podcast, you won't see this. I do implore you to go check out our YouTube channel. We do a lot of graphical stuff. We're just trying to add more and more to it. So that way the, the video side of things is as full as hopefully the audio side has been for so long. Uh, but Hammer has a wonderful background, a little community kit background. Uh, but uh, his background, uh, he's losing arms. I'm sort of getting like the Marty McFly back to the future of a disappearing Polaroid thing. So the more yeah. you keep talking about the community kit, the more you keep disappearing. I'm worried that if you continue along this, you will you, you will just fade into the into the ether. Yeah, and some people in the chat has pointed out as well, just working on some new uh, some new podcasting <laughs> location situations that I'm going through. So my background isn't quite set up like it normally is. So I'm going with uh, the stock background. So my arms might not be there. But again, who who came who comes to see my arms? They come to see the the mug. That's why they're here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll 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 see. Uh, Eduardo, by the way, a little five dollar super chat in there. Um, he says uh, I'm three hundred and fifty in on two jerseys, and now none are authentic. <laughs> this isn't silly. All yeah. caps. This isn't silly. Eduardo, that's you true. should have saved your five dollars and just said that in the chat room. I probably would have read that regardless because that's just but, a that's just an honest and uh, uh, honest thing. So I I, I appreciate you following along uh, with but, all that. Yeah. Now Eduardo could say he's three hundred and fifty-five dollars in, in <laughs> speaking on authentic jerseys. So <laughs> add, add it to the bill. Uh, let's get to some LA Galaxy news. Why not? Let's turn a little page. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see if maybe we can get you to start reappearing again as we keep talking <laughs> and, and comes back. Um, so anyway, uh, the LA Galaxy officially signed Victor Vasquez. We talked about it on Monday night. Uh, we told you that it looked like it was going to happen on Tuesday. Basically, we pushed that even further and told you that it was probably going to happen on Wednesday. Uh, we put this in on uh, on Wednesday and Victor Vasquez was announced at 9 o'clock uh, a.m. Uh, for the LA Galaxy. So 34-year-old signs a one-year contract plus a one-year option. Uh, he takes up an international slot, which lots of people get really worked up about. Um, and he is not a TAM signing, right? So not a targeted allocation money uh, uh, signing, which means that he is a, as I like to call it, a cap hit player, right? He's not a designated player. He's not a targeted allocation money player. He is a cap hit guy. So whatever his salary is, and there's hope, I think, that we're going to see the Players Union release numbers this year. Um, so we should find out how much he's making. I'm going to guess between 250 and 300. That's my guess. Um, he's older. He certainly knows what he's getting into. This is He's coming close to the last contracts of his life. Um, he absolutely, if he does well, he'll get another year. I mean, the club has an option on him for another year. So um, just sort of take that up. This is a guy, though, Eric, and before we get into the discussions about international slots and 34-year-olds and a whole bunch of other stuff... Um, 
he is a guy who has a ridiculous amount of experience. Uh, we certainly know of his 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 escapades or accolades, I should say. They're both got the eight, the 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 lades part of there, I guess. Um, his accolades in Toronto are you know were outstanding. He was part of one of the most successful MLS teams in MLS history that beat the LA Galaxy's point total um, by one in 2017. Uh, MLS Cup winner, Canadian Cup winner. He is a Barcelona guy, you know, he was just hanging out with Messi, just chilling. Um, in fact, there's a picture that shows Victor Vasquez um, and Jonathan Dos Santos with Leo Messi in Barcelona kits. I mean, blows, it blows your mind a little bit. And, and Eric, I think we, I think you're muted. We, we lost you there. So see if you can get your, yeah, um, go ahead. It's okay. You think you would, I, I, this is one of my pet peeves is people being muted. You're on, myself. you're on mute, Eric. I did it. Eric, you're on I mute. Played Just myself. Hit, unmute the button. Yeah. <laughs> I played myself. But I, I will say that, you know, well, it's not like he made his career at Barcelona, but just no. the fact that he came up in that in that Academy La Masia and then coming, you know, being familiar with Jonathan Dos Santos, you can tell they've been friends, you know, with the way they interact interact on social media. Uh, so you're right. I think with the experience and Grant Greg Vanny, uh, you know, vouching for him and, and knowing him and knowing exactly what he's getting. So sometimes when you sign players, you say, well, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's happened before. And, uh, you know, here, Vanny seems to be pretty clear and he knows exactly what he's getting with this player and he feels like he's going to be helpful for the team. So I'm going I'm to trust uh, Greg Vanny on this one. If, if you look at transfer market has his most recent value around 440,000. Usually those numbers are inflated a little bit. So I think you're 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 pretty dead on with probably being somewhere between 250 350 somewhere in that area is where his salary is going to hit and with the international slot we talk about players like Jonathan Bond and um uh who's not taking up an international slot uh Derek Williams not taking up an inter international slot so they they've had international spots to spare in a way so I, I, to me the international spot doesn't bug me as much uh, the 30 you know I don't know if we want to go into his age and, and yeah, go ahead. being without being without a club for a little bit I think that's something that concerns some people. Um, but but I will say, and we, this applies to Samuel Granser as well. I haven't been on to talk about him. Uh, but when we talk about players coming in, not getting a lot of club minutes, not scoring a lot of goals, uh, and then being successful, I just want to point out a couple of notable players in Galaxy's, in the Galaxy's previous seasons. Ariel Antuna, before coming to the Galaxy, um, you know, with his club, he played nine games in, in the league, didn't score a goal, didn't get an assist. Uh, you know, got a couple goals in some in some cup games. Uh, same thing with Allison Drini during you know his recent stint with Marseille. He only got six games, didn't score any goals, didn't get any assists, only got an assist in a cup game. So there's a history of Galaxy players who maybe aren't able to get top minutes in their European clubs or or wherever they're playing, and then coming to the Galaxy and still being successful. So I think that's just important. Uh, to point that out. Uh, and it sounds insulting to, to MLS to say someone without a club is, is going to come right. in there. But, let, but we also have to be realistic with what this league is. If you're not cutting it at other clubs, you you can still dominate or if you're not dominating, still be a, con a contributor, uh, you know, to, to your club. So I think, you know, let's see what happens. We can see how much he contribute. But I don't think the fact that he hasn't produced for his previous club and the same with, with Grantster, I don't think... Uh, you know, I don't think that's going to be too much of a cause for concern. Let's let's see how it plays out. Yeah, I was going to say you and Greg Vanny seem to have the same sort of mindset on that. So uh, we're going to go a whole bunch into Greg Vanny's press conference. So I don't want to like jump into that. Um, I, yes, we do. We do have a super chat. Okay, Madam yes. Serrano says yes. a strike to claim it, and all I have to say is, who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> okay, nice. That's just uh, a joke between me and the madam. No one and, else has to get it. That, and it that's was just for me and the madam. He earned it. I, and it was worth four ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, for for sure, it, it absolutely was, and that I've seen that video. Um, I know that I I know that va video. Classic. So that's a that's a classic video. I wish I had it. I wish we had like video drops I could just drop in and play without think, getting busted for copyright for you know violations and other things. Yeah, if that were a non fungible token, I think I'd invest. That that'd be one I, I'd go after. <laughs> that that's one that's one that's worth a couple couple thou couple thou <laughs> for sure on an on an f on an NFT 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 oh. talk. That's what that's why we're here on that's, Thursday nights. I was gonna say that in AS doc somebody. Said this is like Dr. Pepper ASMR, right? Because <laughs> I, I'm always drinking my Dr. Pepper. Nice. Yes, I. Our listeners are far more entertaining than I will ever be. So I, I just repeat what they say, and I sound smart. Um, but you know, Vasquez, obviously, he brings a whole bunch of of really positive things. I think there is something to say. Is and and I made the argument, you know, on the international slot. 
yes, I'm with you, and I made the same argument, which is you've saved some international slots. You brought Bond and you brought Derek Williams, and so technically you have it. But I mean, you can't just waste international slots either. I will tell you, and uh, my opinion is they didn't, because I think Victor Vasquez is going to be a, a, an important part of the club, whether he's a starter or... And, and listening to Greg Vanny, I certainly get the feeling you're going to see more of him than perhaps you thought whenever they first signed him. Um, but at the same time, whether he's a starter or a backup, however that works, I think he's going to be a quality signing. And I think that there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. The leadership part of it is certainly there. Knowing there are now two guys on the LA Galaxy, which is crazy to think. The LA Galaxy have the most MLS Cups in Major League Soccer history. They have five. They won three in four years, 2011, 2012, 2014. Um, and if you took uh, Victor Vasquez and Jorge Villafania off this team, there would be exactly zero MLS Cups throughout the yeah. entire roster. Um, and those are first yeah. year LA Galaxy players too, on top of it. Yeah, yeah. And and so it's crazy to think there's not that pedigree there because for so long every member of the LA Galaxy knew what it meant to be to win an MLS Cup. It was the guys who, you know, who who came in in between seasons that didn't know what it was like and then they quickly learned because there's something about a team knowing what it takes to win a championship. Uh, knowing how to win a championship in 2012 after playing like the longest season in 2011, going through all the competitions in 2012, turning it on in the second half, by the way, everybody pretends that was a late year run. It was like a, a second half run. It started in yeah. like the middle of the summer and then just, you know, torched everybody from there on out. Um, and so, you know, it took knowing how to win championships in order for that team to be successful. 2014, same thing. It took people knowing how to win, knowing what it meant to put into training, knowing what you had to do in training in order to be at a high enough level during the games to be able to still win an MLS Cup. Those are all learned things. Um, and so because they're learned and you don't have any, there's a gap in knowledge there right now. And Victor Vasquez helps close that. Not only that. But Greg Vanny mentioned it even, even you know, his press conference, he, he basically said, you know, I, I don't need to tell Victor what I want. He's going to already know what I want. And yeah. he's going to be able to impart that on the field immediately. And, and that goes to your point where, um, you know, maybe you see the age and you see, you know, being out of a club and you think, well, maybe this is a bench player. Or this is someone who's not going to be, you know, a full-time starter or giving a lot of minutes. But if Vanny's bringing him in and Vanny already knows what he wants, you're right. We might be seeing him a lot more. Uh, than maybe we anticipated, and that might not be a bad thing. Uh, thirty-four people wear thirty-four years years differently. Some people thirty-four, you know, the legs are falling off. Some people thirty-four, they still got plenty of gas in the tank. So uh, we we just have to give it time and see what it's going to look like. There there are some players who have come to the galaxy at that age or a little bit, you know, around around that age. And it's looked like the twilight of their career, and it shows by the way they play. There's other players that have come in around that age and have just been great contributors, solid players, some of the best players on the team, MVP, uh, Galaxy MVP, you know, player of the year type seasons from players of that age group. So it all depends on what we're getting. But I think with the experience, uh, and it's almost uh, a shame because it, with the Galaxy winning so many cups, and it's almost like they always had someone who had won a championship you know, for a while who knew what it was like for, during that dynasty run. Right. And when you think about the run of form that they've had in the past few seasons, that is the piece that's been missing. They haven't had the, you know, that, that knowledge of, of the championship run and what, what it takes. Uh, so, so it, I think it's smart to bring in players like that, like Villafania, like Vasquez, who are going to have that, that information, uh, you know, to impart in addition uh, to kind of a storied, you know, club career with Vasquez and the Academy that he, and, uh, you know, connections that he has i think that's you know you're getting a smart player as well yeah and and by the way ronald in the chat says that uh, o'neill fisher also has a cup okay. uh, i think he got it with the with seattle. seattle yeah with yep. seattle so that so again though it even proves our point again another guy who just got brought in who knows how yeah. to win an mls cup so ronald thank you for that appreciate it uh, ronald if you email me i will send you a sticker all right corner of the galaxy at gmail.com ronald all right Thank you. Um, so, I mean, that's, the, you know, you look at all of these things and, and you say that Victor Vasquez is one of those important pieces, could be a very important piece. If he doesn't play at all, I still think he's going to be, it can be <laughs> an important piece, right? Now, you know, again, we have to look at that number. If we don't know the salary number, we have no idea how to judge this because if they're paying him $600,000 and I'm sitting there going, whoa, guys, that's a lot of cap space to be using on somebody. Um, Having listened to Greg Vanny, I don't even know if I'd be surprised if that was the number, by the way. Yeah. Just because of how much 
uh, faith and how much stock that Vanny puts in it. Vanny's a fan. I mean, mm-hmm. Vanny's a fan of Victor Vasquez. He says he's one of the smartest players he's ever coached. Um, and we have some of that uh, audio coming up here in just a little bit. So just sort of keeping that all in mind. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the cap has to be spent somewhere. And those roster spots are, are filling up. So, you know, if you if you have to spend the money and, and if it takes a little bit extra to get one of your guys, uh, you know, we're okay with having friends and bringing in some of your favorites. So, so that's okay. That's okay also because I think th- there's not a lot of spots left to bring people in. So you're going to have to use that money. You don't, it doesn't roll over. These aren't rollover minutes, uh, you know, singular wireless, you know, 2001, you know, the, you, you have to use it or lose it. This isn't the family sharing plan. Just roll that, <laughs> roll that baby over. Everybody can use it. Everybody's in the bucket, that type of thing. Um, I'll say that Greg Vanny seemed pretty emphatic. Um, and I will say that, uh, you know, having talked to Dennis DeClosa a little bit as well, um, they're still planning on bringing guys in. I would imagine at least two to three, possibly even four. Um, and I know we're at 27 as we look at the roster right now, but we've talked so much and so many times about the G2 guys, Eric, who yeah. will, who are senior teams, but will, will be playing with G2. And there's at least, you know, two of them. You're not going to dress three goalkeepers every time. You're probably going to send at least one down to G2. Um, and you're probably going to have, and that could even be two that are going to be playing down in G2. So, I mean, that yeah. starts opening up spots. There are guys on this roster whose majority of minutes in 2021 will be with G2. Um, and yeah. that seems seems pretty. So there uh, there's room on the roster. Um, there's money to be spent. Definitely a TAM player. At least one more TAM player. Um, I, I think I can read the cards. There might even be enough room for two more TAM players. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't like make you have happy dreams at night, I don't know what doesn't. If I tell you that you have room for a designated player and two more TAM players um, with a roster sort of where it is right now. I mean, I I don't have much confidence in this roster yet. I, yeah. I could say that, it, you know, if you're asking me if it's going to be more 2017 or 2014, I'm going to say it's 2017. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe should I say it's more, it's more 2017 right now than it is more 2009. Um, I, yeah. I, I think it's closer to 20, 2018, like just coming off of that. I, I don't think it's going to, I think maybe the 2020 team was more 2017 than this team, uh, you know, back in, in December and in early January, we were talking about, you know, where are the signings, what's happening? I think the signings they brought in have made this team better. I, I think this isn't going to be a, a, a total disaster, and maybe I'll eat my words yeah, I mean, <laughs> once that, the season that's what goes we do on. Here. But I, I think that they're bringing in players that are going to improve the roster. I'm feeling better about it than I did uh, a month or two months ago. You're still, I mean, and Vanny commented on this, and I don't know if it was this, it wasn't this press conference, I think it was before, but he was talking about the separation. I have the older guys, I have the younger guys, I need the guys in between. Yeah. The DP... And the TAM players are those guys who are in between. I mean, I'm guessing they're targeting guys who are anywhere between 24 and 28 in that sort of zone right there to spend that type of money on it. So that's still coming. And the defensive midfielder part of this is probably the most important spot that is... we Again, we're going to talk Christian Bavone a little yeah. bit. Uh, but I mean... You know, there's a designated player spot open, and that could be very big if it's not Christian Pavone. Um, and we'll we'll sort of discuss what's going on with that to sort of let you know where it's at. Um, but the DM part of that is so important right now because it really fills out the lineup. I mean, we sort of know that whoever they're going to bring in as a DP probably going to be a winger, Eric. That's yeah. that's what that's what we're figuring, right? Probably going to be a winger. So the DM part of that we know is a TAM player. So what kind of defensive midfielder? And Vanny said, you know, very clearly uh, before that the DM is a position that they're looking for. They need another midfielder in there. Um, it's not a position that Victor Vasquez fills. Uh, that was pretty clear, I think, uh, through different discussions with different people. It's not like uh, VV. Uh, that's that's his that's his nickname because I don't like t- typing Victor Vasquez all the time. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's not like Vasquez is going to play the defensive side of that. He's not. Um, he's probably closer to Pirlo than he is, you know, uh, <laughs> Nigel De Jong on this. Yeah. Okay. So um, so but that defensive mid is probably the most important thing to still focus on. So for me, that's where I'm really paying more attention than anything else because one, I have no rumors that I know of about any defensive midfielder or even, you know, a box to box guy who can play next to Jonathan Dos Santos. Yep. Um, and two, I think it's the most important position on the field right now because it allows everybody else to do what they're good at. Um, if you get that defensive mid. So, uh, yeah. that's my, that's my big question right now. Yeah. I, I think you're right. If, if that, that designated uh, player spot is open, traditionally the defensive midfielder is not where you splash the cash for a defensive midfielder. That's not where you spend that DP money. So you're right. It's going to be in that TAM region. But the the cause for concern, and you mentioned it, is that 
the the rumor well is a little bit dry. It's not like we're hearing some of the names. And then the other part of this, uh, and maybe it's just because my uh, my scouting network probably isn't very strong. But when you play the hypothetical game of who can the galaxy bring in, there are no names that really you know come to the front of my mind. You know, maybe the chat could help us out. But like, who's going to be a dynamic defensive midfielder that's at the galaxy's level or at MLS level that can come in and make a difference? I don't have any like I don't have that name that just you know comes off the top of my head. And so, you know, you have to hope that maybe Dennis DeClosa and his scouting network and Greg Vanny and his experience ha- have some feelers out for those type of guys. But, you know, when you talk about that dream wish list, I don't think that position, to me, I don't have a, a name that jumps out, you know, that the, the gal- that'd be a, the, a capable for the Galaxy to get. Yeah, uh, I think that all makes sense. Let's uh, let's get a little bit away from uh, from Vanny um, and roster building, and let's get uh, to the press conference because I think this press conference and it's not a press conference. Okay, let's. I mean, it's not. There's a different. There's a difference between a press conference and a media call, and I know that's sort of like pedantic and it's probably a little inside baseball, but a media call is where we get to like talk to the coach, and a press conference is where you announce something that is important. And I remember. Because I saw it, people were like, "They're going to announce Victor Vasquez at a press conference at nine a, at, you know, at at twelve thirty p.m." <laughs> I'm like, "No, they're not. No, they're just going to put out a press release about Victor Vasquez, and then we're going to talk to Greg at twelve thirty. That's sort of those are two yeah. different things. You know, there's no Victor holding up a holding up a shirt. You know, <laughs> well, I was going to say they they didn't get the creative team on uh, on a video for no. Victor the Vic, Victor Vasquez reveal. That's how you know that his salary wasn't that much, right? I yeah. mean, not only not the TAM designation, which puts his salary under six hundred twelve thousand five hundred dollars. We know that." Um, but it's the fact that there's there's no video, right? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he, they didn't rent a lion. So, they you know, that tells you everything you need to know right there. <laughs> they, they had they had enough in the budget for a mongoose. That's what I heard. And so Victor Vasquez <laughs> yeah. will be known as the mongoose from the here ferret. on. The, 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 the ferret. The wild ferret. The wild ferret. They got a bunny because it was on yeah. clearance for Easter. <laughs> um, so the bunny rabbit, Victor Vasquez in the middle, the bunny. <laughs> Um, that's, this is how nicknames start. And I apologize yeah. to him already. Um, when we have him <laughs> on the show, we're going to be like, and it's the bunny rabbit himself, Mr. Victor Vasquez. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and he's going to be looking at us all weird. And we're going to be like, yeah, yeah, we're sorry. Yeah. He doesn't like one. No, no, he doesn't that like one. the bunny rabbit. No, he, <laughs> he had to deal with that before. So he's, he's out now. Um, okay. So let's talk to the press conference. I have some press conference clips that I want to get to you, get to, and then I want to talk about some things. So I want to get to, uh, Greg Vanny. Uh, talking about Victor Vasquez. Uh, there's a couple of clips in there about Victor Vasquez, and there's one at the end that I got to ask a question about about Grant Sir as well. He sort of interchanges a whole bunch of different things. So um, let's get you just a little bit of information about uh, Victor Vasquez straight from Mr. Greg Vanny. So uh, hang in there for us. Uh, I like everything about him. Uh, arguably, he's one of those, the most intelligent soccer players that I've ever been around. Uh, his ability to organize the game, understand what the game needs, his vision for the final pass, um, his leadership within our group, I think is going to be really important as we, again, establish the culture and, and the vision of where we're moving forward. And his technical ability is off the charts, but he processes the game in his mind as fast as anyone I've ever seen. And so his, his recognition of things is, is excellent. I think for a player like Javier, who, who again, one of his strengths is his running and his quick movements and, and second and third runs to get himself open. A guy like Victor is going to recognize those runs and put the ball where he needs it, where sometimes players tend to play his first run when he needs it on his second or third run. And so Again, I think just he, he's another guy that really can organize the final action for us um, different than really I think most guys ever in the history of this league. He's got that quality. I mean, I think it's an objective of our whole team to, to create chances and to, to put um, Javier and others in positions to, to score goals. Um, but I think Victor is one with the special qualities and, and an eye for the past that sometimes most of us don't see. He, he finds a way to see it and deliver it. And so... Um, you know, there's a couple of things that have to happen there, as I, as I was saying. Collectively, we've got to be better and, and more clear about how we want to go about creating chances. But even inside of that, you've got to have the special players who can, who can deliver some of those, those balls more, freak, more frequently than others or see them more frequently than others. And that's, that's what he brings uh, to the equation. But that, it's going to be the same as we continue to add wingers, uh, Samuel being one of them. We hope others here will get closed out pretty soon. They're going to be an, uh, an integral part of that, uh, that process as well. And so um, these are just these are pieces that are one, one by one that are starting to come together. And we hope there are many more here in our future, not, not too far down the road. 
Um, I'll, I will start with, with one. Uh, Victor, um, you know, I, I have obviously spoken with him over the last few years. We have a good relationship. Um, you know, he hasn't played a ton during the pandemic and during all of this time. And so I think he feels as fresh as he ever has in his career. Uh, he's been working very hard. I've watched and spoken to some of the people that have been working with him. Um, I think there's a lot left uh, in him, and I think he's super eager to get on the field and compete again. You know, I think one of the things he's missed over the last couple of years is he's really missed MLS and the competitive level of MLS. And uh, so I know he's excited to, to be here. I think there's a lot left. And I think we have a fresh player who hasn't, you know, hasn't put a ton of miles on his legs in the recent time. So he's going to be, he's going to be fresh when he arrives and he's ready to join our group. So, uh, and the way he sees the game and the way he understands the game is he's an extremely efficient player in terms of, um, understanding what the game needs in any given moment from him. And so uh, from that, I, I, I look forward to it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm not concerned one bit about his age or any of that stuff. I think it's, it's his mind that fits into our team that's going to make such a, a big uh, difference in his leadership and personality. All right, so a, a little bit about uh, Victor Vasquez there talking about uh, just what he brings. And Eric, again, you listen to how Vanny talks to him, and I got the sense that Victor Vasquez is going to be a much more important part of this LA Galaxy team than perhaps you say. I mean, I even made the argument he's like the 16th guy on an 18 man roster, and everybody's freaking out about it. Um, the way you hear Greg Vanny talk about it, it seems like Victor Vasquez is a is 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 the guy. I mean, yeah, not not maybe not the starter. Maybe he doesn't start all the time, and I don't think. And Greg talked a bunch in this in this press conference as well about managing minutes correctly and understanding that you know. Um, Jonathan Dos Santos and Sebastian Lejet and possibly Efrain Alvarez as well are going to be gone. You're going to rely at some point on guys like Sasha Kleschen, like Victor Vasquez to start games, and they're going to have to start games. And so the depth there is important. Vinny is very well aware. He also said he's very happy, by the way, for those guys to be going and doing that stuff in their career. He wants them to go away and be in their national teams, and that's you know that's an important thing. And then I remember. I remember hearing other coaches like Guillermo and whatever he would talk about internationally. He's like, well, what else can we do? You know, blah, 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 like that. And even Siggy sometimes it was like, you know, well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's just part of, it's part of the deal. It's not like Greg and quite honestly, Bruce was sort of like this as well, which was like, Bruce was like, go, you need to go to the national team. Yeah. You know, he was never, he was never like, I'm going to hold you here. I'm going to hold you because, you know, I don't want you to go. Or if he ever did, it was because the player didn't want to go. Right. And he was like, mm -hmm. well, I just won't release you then if you don't want to go. Yeah, and it's it's it comes down to that that saying iron, iron sharpens iron that you want your players getting competitive minutes and playing, uh, you know, going getting other experiences, training with other players, other coaches, and maybe bringing something new in their tool set that they didn't have or that they weren't going to get staying with you. So so it totally makes sense, and uh, you know it is funny that I was mentioning it before, and you mentioned it, and the chat was all over it. Big shout out to AFJ who's in the chat also. Uh, you mentioned it sounds like VV is getting the start based on how highly Vanny was speaking of him. And when you think about, we've been saying this for so long, what have the Galaxy been missing? They've been missing that Cam, that player who's, you know, has the knowledge and knows where to place the ball and has that that deft touch and can pull the strings, the maestro. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, Victor Vasquez could be that guy. And it seems like Vanny trusts him to be that guy. So maybe we're thinking he's the 16th or 18th man, but maybe he proves himself to be a valuable asset and, in a role that the Galaxy have lacked and really need, he, he fills that need or looks to fill that need. Uh, and we just have to see the play on the field to see how it works out. I'm trying to figure out like formations that put Victor Vasquez and Sebastian Legette next to each other with Jonathan Dos Santos behind them. But Jonathan Dos Santos still having a forward role that we've been told yeah. he's going to have. And Sebastian Legette basically playing up underneath Chicharito, which we expect sort of from, you know, matching what the U.S. men's national team does and what Greg Vanny wants from. So it's just really interesting. I mean, yeah. the formation this year could be really, really interesting. And I imagine that it's going to change a lot in different phases, right? The attacking phase, how many players get forward and where they get forward um, and, mm -hmm. and the defensive side of things, too. So, yeah. And I, I know that the scrimmage in, uh, in in Chula Vista with, uh, you know, the Columbus crew, I know that was quiet, but that's why I'm chomping at the bit to see these preseason games because I yeah. want to see how they line up or who Vanny puts out on the field together because that's going to tell you a lot. So I'm really looking forward to the next month to see, uh, you know, the player combina combinations that he puts out there because I think that is going to tell us a lot. Like you said, uh, are we going to see, 
you know, Vasquez and, and Legette next to each other? Are we going to see Legette out wide? Are we going to see him underneath Chicharito like we're expecting? Because you mentioned he's going to play uh, similar to how he plays with Burhalter. So, yeah, it's exciting. Exciting times to see how, how, how it actually is going to look once that ball rolls out. FYI, you will not be able to watch the game that is this Saturday, right? That's the one against San Diego Loyal. Um, and I got an email, somebody asking me about that. Uh, will actually emailed in and said, hey, when it says it says this on Spectrum. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're not. This game isn't the one. It's the next one. It's <laughs> next weekend uh, that you'll be able to see. It's a Saturday night game, Spectrum Sportsnet against New, Bruce, Bruce Arena's New England Revolution. AJ De La Garza's New England Revolution <laughs> as well. So um, there's some fun connections there. So that's the one that you'll be able to see. And then. Uh, the other game, I think, is midweek with New England, and that's going to be like a Wednesday night, and that's on LAGalaxy.com, so they'll be streaming that one. And then they go off to Tucson. Um, I am working on finding out, and I saw information today that they are going to be uh, allowing fans in Tucson. Yeah. I don't know how many yet. We always assumed that would be the case, um, mostly with yeah. Arizona's rules. We were like, that's probably going to yeah. happen. But Arizona's been having, you know, club tournaments and things like that. So I think when when people saw that the this was announced, they already booked trips to Arizona in anticipation that in some way or another, the fans are going to be, even if it's a limited capacity, uh, we're going to be there. And so there, I know a lot of supporters are banking on that. By the way, uh, in the chat room is feel the berm, and that's the berm as in the yeah. the, the grass at, uh, at Dignity Health Sports Parks. Feel the berm says, can someone fly a drone over the field for us? That's interesting. We're actually here on Corner of the Galaxy. We're starting a drone fund. So if you want a drone, <laughs> um, I've always wanted a drone. This sounds like a great way for me to get one. Um, so uh, by the way, you're not allowed to fly it over sporting events. That would be a violation um, of FAA regulations. There's temporary flight, flight restriction zones over sporting events. Anyway, it gets very, very interesting, yeah, but, but but I still yeah, want a still. drone, so donate, donate away. Um, yeah, it, it's just, I, I'm I, I'm with you. I'm excited to see how it all sort of lays out. Um, the other thing, I, let me play you one more thing from, from Vanny, and this was more on Grand Sur, and I was able to ask him um, about Grand Sur at the very end and sort of say, you know, same thing with Grand Sur that Larry asked the question, by the way, does, how much does Victor Vasquez have left and are you worried about him not um, not having played a whole bunch of games. And he's like, listen, this is like good news. Somebody said uh, with, with Victor Vasquez not playing and listening to what Vanny said, it's like saying, well, really, he's got the legs of a 32-year-old and not a 34-year-old because <laughs> he hasn't been playing for the last two years, right? That's um, that's generous. But that, right? we all know, I, I like that. But you also know when you leave the car in the garage for too long without starting it, you know, you, yeah. you might have to change the battery too. So, yeah, so well, there's the other fine. side of the coin. That's fine. <laughs> get get Victor Vasquez an oil change. You know, get, <laughs> just 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 lube him up a little bit, and away he'll go. Uh, he'll right. he'll be I'm just not fine. touching that. I didn't think you would. Um, <laughs> all right, let me get to uh, to Greg Vanny on uh, Grand Sur. And my question basically was like same sort of question: Are you worried about him not having played? Um, and we're still waiting for these guys to come in. And Greg Vanny sort of, I, I think, not in this clip, but I'll, I'll tell you what he said about when these guys possibly could be into camp. So uh, here's here's uh, Greg Vanny on uh, Samuel Grantzer. Uh, not concerned about, has, hasn't played a lot. He's been training. He's been in Monaco. He's been a part of their setup last year uh, at Brest. He played a lot of matches, first division, things like that. I think, you know, I think, again, he'll be fresh. He'll be sharp. He'll, he's an experienced young player in terms of playing a, a lot of high-level soccer. He'll, he'll fit in pretty quickly. We'll make sure during preseason we'll have enough time that, that we'll build him up and make sure he's ready. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about it. Everybody in MLS is coming off of basically being off for four or five months uh, anyways since the last time we played. So it's not like uh, – it's not too different. You know, our, our guys just played their first scrimmage game this weekend against Columbus having, uh, I don't think, played a match in almost six months. And so five, six months. And so – uh, I think he just needs to have a good preseason once he gets here and and um, and we'll be able to move forward from there. Uh, in terms of his qualities, again, he's a, a very talented soccer player, uh, winger, um, who we can use wide on the right side as kind of a natural traditional winger. We could use him as an inverted type of winger on the left side. He's very capable of playing in between the lines. He's very capable of getting behind opposition. Um, and, and he's a hardworking two-way guy that will give you an honest shift on the defensive side and, and, uh, and has quality on the attacking side. So I, I believe he's, you know, his quality in the final action is, is, uh, is good and something that will continue to get better. I mean, he's, he's still a pretty young guy. And so uh, to have somebody with international pedigree like he does coming to our league at the age of 24 um, is a pretty special opportunity to continue because he's going to continue to develop and get better, and he's going to do that within our within our system and structure, which is exciting for us. 
All right, there you go. A little, uh, little Greg Vanny on uh, Samuel Grand Sir talking about his quality, talking about a very experienced young player. I like that. I like sort of looking at that. Not worried at all about him not playing games. Uh, they did have COVID interruptions in France um, for those leagues. So that's something to keep in mind. Same thing with um, with Victor Vasquez. There were COVID interruptions. People didn't get to play a lot of things. Um, so it's it's very again it, it it's going to be very i can't wait to see grand sir and yeah. vasquez and grand sir uh vanny said in the press conference are he's hoping to have them in early next week uh that's not a for sure but then they have to go through quarantine all right seven days seven days with the negative tests 10 days without a test that's where we're at right now um and so um that's that's sort of where we're going um it's really interesting i can't the other thing that's been happening at Dignity Health Sports Park, I know people have been reading the articles, Eric, but they've been giving out vaccinations at Dignity Health yeah. Sports Park for for uh, a large portion of that Carson community and, and around L.A., a, a lot of the underserved communities were going to uh, Dignity Health Sports Park. Uh, Kevin, the panda, actually wrote a really good article about it if you wanted to read it, and he talks about Dennis DeClosa and his wife out there directing traffic with, like, flags, and uh, he said that somebody did, like, a double take. They're like, hey, you used to Wait run the... Yeah, he was like, you used to run the Mexican national team, and now, you, now you're out here directing traffic um but it's really but but it's really interesting too because um and this goes for everybody this is this is everybody in our chat room this goes for you and i eric if you want to volunteer at those places you can get a vaccine they will give you a vaccine if you go and volunteer at those places so go look it's a california like deal they're saying we need help so if you want to help we'll give you a vaccine um, which is, which is super cool. So that goes, yeah. if you're in the chat room and you want to get a vaccine, you want to get it now, go volunteer for a day. Um, you, I think it's like you have to do eight hours in order to get a vaccine or something like that. So volunteer two days for four hours, that type of thing. You do it, you're done and you're going to get the vaccine and then you can come back and get the next one too. So it's a great deal. Um, but I know that some of the galaxy front office staff have been out there volunteering multiple days, um, putting out a lot of work out in the parking lot. And so some of them have gotten vaccinated players though have not. And you'd have to imagine that's a little bit of a PR thing, right? Like, because they could have players out there directing traffic, Eric. Um, yeah. Well, didn't they have, uh, I thought I saw legit and some, maybe there was just a photo opportunity. They probably weren't at the level directing traffic, well, but, well, it, but I, it, I think, I think they were helping, but they don't okay. want them to get the vaccine. Right. So they, like they've been out there volunteering, but as of right now, because of major league soccer, because of the PR look of how things are, they don't want them quote unquote jumping yeah. the line, even though they're out there volunteering and everybody has the right to do that. Yeah. And that's the other thing that they're saying. I'm not going to get too far into it, but they say jumping the line it, it isn't that hurtful because you're you're getting vaccinated and helping with the herd immunity and all that that goes along with that. So that's a topic for another show, I'm, I'm certain. Uh, but it is nice to see that, you know, if, if, you know, we're interested in getting to the other side and getting people vaccinated and able to watch games in person, that the Galaxy are playing a part of that. Uh, it, it is pretty cool. But what, what were we talking about? Grand Sir? And yeah, so that's not, it. <laughs> not getting his games. Uh, so the only thing that concerns me about that signing, uh, and I think you mentioned it on previous shows as well, is if this Victor Vasquez doesn't work out, it's a one year plus one, you can let him go at the end, kind of like what the Insua deal was right. uh, last season, even though I thought, you know, he's probably worth going another option for this year, but it was, yes. probably came down to price. But the thing that concerns me with Grand Sur is it's a four year deal. So if it doesn't pan out, then, then you're stuck with them and, and it could be a problem. But but you're right. When we're talking about the age gap, and, and Vanny has explicitly said we need players within this specific age gap, he fits it, has the experience, looks like someone who can do it. And again, I'll point to players like Ariel Antuna and Roman Alessandrini who didn't came from similar situations and were able to be impact players on the Galaxy. So uh, it does excite me to see to see what he could do. I think he can. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm, I sort of sit in the same way. Yeah, it's a three years plus one on the option. So three year deal um, for, for Grant Sir. Um, so yeah, you're, you're stuck with him. But that was the type of player that Vanny wanted, right? He wanted the guy who was going to be consistent. He wants him here for the next three years. But you're right. It doesn't work out. Now, yeah, what but, do you have? But to speak out of both sides of my mouth, because yeah. it's it's what I do, is uh, the what they do is, is if... Uh, if you're going to pay, for, if you're going to get a player that age, you need to pay a little bit more. Right. You know, if you're only going to offer a one year deal, that's that 34, 34 year old, you know, player, that's who you can offer that type of contract for a player who's, you know, between 25, 28, they're not going to go somewhere for one year. They're going to want three, four years. And so, you know, that that's the price you pay, the price of doing business really. Yeah, it is. Um, more more press conference stuff. I'm going to go over my notes here kind of quickly, just so that way we can make sure we touch on a whole bunch of these things. Um, Vanny comes in and basically says, 
um, that he's not worried about the fitness for Grand Sir or Vasquez because they've both been working out with their teams. They've both been so really it's just about getting them in and getting them through quarantine so that way they can just join right in with the preseason. Uh, says the Galaxy have to be clear about how they want to play and what their identity is. Says there are still pieces to be added. Sort of says, you know, hopefully soon that that, that comes in. Um, but he has, you know, the, the short term and the long term, right? The short term is that they need to have a competitive team for 2021. The long term side of this is that they want continuity across multiple years, which is what you and I were talking about with Grant Sir um, and sort of uh, in, in those different things. Uh, Vanny continues uh, with the, I don't have enough information to have an opinion on Christian Pavone, which I think is very interesting. We're going to talk about Pavone here in a little bit. Um, confidence and competitive standpoint, the young players that he brought in. So Eric, the, the uh, G2 guys, the draft guys, um, and the young signings, the homegrowns that he has in camp, he says he's been very, very impressed that they're not taken in by the moment, that they're in and they're part of the club. You know, you don't want yeah. those guys being like, oh my God, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's Chicharito and stuff like that. It's like, no, they're, he says that they're committed and they're focused and they're, and they're paying attention. And, and that's one of the cool things that you're seeing about the kind of the stock footage that's rolling out from training is a lot of the players who are contributing in those videos are those G2 players, those younger players. You know, we've seen Adam Saldana, you know, and the, you're, you're rolling some of that V footage right now, you know, putting in some bangers and seeing, uh, you know, Jalen Neal out there, you know, contributing, playing defense, uh, Marcus Fracranis out there as well. So it, it, these aren't, uh, you know, signings just to say we signed these, gotta, uh, these academy players or these G2 products. They're actually getting involved and being a part of the team, which is what you want to see, especially when you consider players, uh, you know, like last last season with the MLS's back, someone like Cameron Dunbar, who to me was almost like a a breakout player. Like I, I want to see more of him. So if they can get some of those diamonds in the rough and then give them a, a spotlight and you know give them the right opportunities to to succeed, uh, I'm excited for that. I I would just like to pause right here and ask: Are you ordering food during the <laughs> the podcast? I, I mean, I what what's going on here? So, so Cameron, who's in the chat, he said, come back to Bruxy. So if, if you haven't been to Bruxy, it's a waffle shop. There, there's a few locations. I think one's in, uh, uh, there's one in Costa Mesa. I yes, think there's I, one in, I, I, yeah, there's I, one in Brea as well. Uh, you know, excellent waffles and, and, and chicken and, and, and desserts and uh, frozen custard. When I was picking up my, my to-go order, mm -hmm. I got recognized, recognized in public, which, you know, it's always weird for me because it's always awkward. Yeah. You know, because except, like, it, except never... it's happening like every week now, so I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of getting you're you're getting used to it. I can tell your it, wife texts me. I know <laughs> my wife always she gets you know she she keeps me humble. That's for sure. <laughs> but I but I get excited. Uh, we know when someone you know recognize me. I do I do. It's like what do I do with my hands? I don't know how to react. I always right. You know, but but it was very cool. So he he gave us a shout out uh, in the chat. He said come back. So I ordered. I told him to hold my uh, spicy chicken sandwich, my waffle sandwich. Hold it for me next time I come in to Bruxy and Brea. Hey Cameron, uh, do me a favor. Come back to the chat room. If he doesn't tip you well, um, you know you you have every right to call him out. All right, so don't comp him anything. He's he's perfectly fine. All right, he doesn't need any comp. He doesn't need free stuff. Uh, if you want to charge him extra, that's fine with me. So whatever whatever you want to do with that. So to be I, fair, yeah, it's one of those things where you tip before. So had I known. Oh, now, now it's going to look bad. It's going to look excuses. bad. Don't pull up those receipts, Cameron. The excuses. The excuses. <laughs> All right. Anyway, no. Um, but, you know, just talk about the young guys again. It's it's important to see them in camp. It's important to... that. I mean, they're an integral part of this roster right now, especially the way that it's currently being built out. And so if you don't have that, um, then you need to have it. Um, you need to have these guys comfortable. He talked about Jonathan Bond a whole bunch and how much he's fitting in and what a character he is. He's a goalkeeper. Of course, he's a character. Uh, but we talked to him, and he's a great guy. Um, so it's one of those. It's like, hey, yeah, we get it. He's he's a fun guy to talk to, and so uh, that's sort sort of thing. Um, he talked about Augie Williams scoring over the weekend, and he talked about how how big of a deal that is, and how Augie Williams comes in there and finds a way to score, and that's that's really cool. Augie is playing himself onto the senior team. He should have already played himself onto the senior team. I have a feeling it's going to come down to signings in terms of how many players they have and where he goes, but we all know that they need a backup for Chicharito and my money would definitely be behind putting Augie Williams ahead of Ethan Zubak. That's my, my point of view. Um, but it, I, I didn't see enough from, from Zubak last year to, to sort of warrant me saying, oh yeah, he should, he's definitely going to be, you know, back in that sort of backup role for me, Augie yeah. Williams should be that number two. So, um, be, be careful. The, the, the Zubak hive is going to come after you for that <laughs> as someone who's, uh, and grading the galaxy been a, a little bit harsh on him. And you know, there, there are some believers out there, but, but I'm, I'm with you. I think the revelation uh, of last week, or, or was it this week? I can't keep my days straight, uh, was Augie Williams making that post that he did score in that game. 
game. And I'm with you. I, th- I think he, if we talk about needing a second striker. I think he fits the billing. We were calling for him to come up last season. And I think it's just a matter of time before, you know, we, we get him on that first team uh, and getting those regular minutes. Cause I think with his, his body type and his style of play, he, he is someone that I think can contribute to the first team. Has everybody figured out we're going longer than we normally go? tonight because we have so <laughs> much stuff i was gonna yeah i was gonna say that's nothing new so um that's usually what happens when hammer's on anyway the the, the whole show right. notes go out the window he has to comment on everything orders food in the middle of the thing <laughs> so not not but a surprise I, um there were some concerns from greg vanny he talks about you know sebastian legit and jonathan dos santos and efrain and being gone um you know in large chunks of the season for their international he says we have to we need to have those options available and we need to add one or two in those spots so he's still looking again if you're trying to figure out where greg Vanny's trying to add people look in the central or midfield that seems to be a place um I think there's a lot of guys who are flexible within the midfield in terms of places you can play him Grant Sir can play on either wing you can move Sebastian Legette to the center or he can play out on a wing um you know Sasha Kleshin's going to be married to where he's at uh Vector Vasquez is probably married to where he's at Jonathan Dos Santos can be a defensive player or an offensive player right so if they don't bring in the DM right away um then you could see that Jonathan Dos Santos will be playing that position and you could have Sebastian Legit in there with Victor Vasquez next to Jonathan Dos Santos. I mean, I don't hate that, by the way. So, yeah. you know, you're already getting that well, sort of sort of feeling. And that's what I was saying. You know, when Vanny talked about playing Jonathan Dos Santos more in an attacking role, I like Jonathan Dos Santos as, as the defensive midfielder role. So I would love to see uh, Vasquez and Legit at the cam. And then if we're able to get, uh, you know, that extra special winger on the other side, uh, in addition to Grant Sir and then the forward, I, I'd like to see how that lines up. Uh, but it, you're right. It gives you versatility because depending on who you bring in, you can mix and match and, and, and uh, you know, and change the pieces there, which is nice. Jeff, big shout out. It's a little super chat. Four dollars and ninety nine. I always wonder if it like rounds down or why we always get the four ninety nine. <laughs> I think the that they, I think they're saying we're not worth five dollars. That's yeah, what I think it is. That's fine. Well, I, I'm okay they, with that. They've done experiments on this. It's it's your mind when you're donating. You're, you're only donating four dollars, but and it's nine. really closer to five, so it all works out. And Jeff. With a pH, I don't think I've seen that. I dig it. Jeff, Jeff is uh, is spect. I was going to try to do something, and I didn't. I, didn't, I decided not to do it. <laughs> he's he's fantastic with, with a pH. That's it's much better than what I had. This is this is why I leave the the one liners to you, and I just sit over here singing Dua Lipa lyrics. So that's just me. <laughs> what a um, performance, by the way. Can we talk about that, or that's another show? That what? Which one? Oh, the, the Grammys, oh, oh, I, it's great. I, I didn't, I didn't watch. I okay, didn't watch. You, I, I look have, it up. I, I have a child, small child. We don't, I don't get to watch <laughs> things. Um, all right, let's go a little bit. Uh, we talked about it a whole bunch, but Jonathan Dos Santos, Efrain Alvarez, Sebastian Legit, all called up to their national teams. Uh, Jonathan Dos Santos and Efrain Alvarez both called up to Mexico national teams for the uh, friendlies that are upcoming, and Sebastian Legit called up for the U.S. team. One of the few MLS U.S. based players that got called in for um, some of these games. I think they're over in Europe, so. Uh, Sebastian Legette gets called into that. Uh, this is on top of Julian Araujo, who did today play for the U.S. U23s um, in the Olympic qualifying. They beat Costa Rica one to nothing. Play came in in the 83rd minute. Um, did a good job of coming in and settling the game a little bit, actually. So not all, not a, a horrible performance. These are rapid fire games, all being played like a mile above sea level. So there's going to be a lot of rotation. So Julian Araujo only got a little bit of time. I think they play again on Sunday, um, and so I would imagine that Julian Rajo might even start that game um, as yeah. they, they're going to play against uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, who yeah. lost to Mexico, I believe. Uh, I didn't get to watch the whole game, um, but they were yeah. losing, and it looked like they were going to lose, so um, that's sort of it, sort of where yeah. it is. This so. this was the more difficult of the of the group games. Well, not to, to start it, if you're going to, if, if Rajo is going to look to see time, getting that win against Costa Rica puts him in a good position. So maybe you can rotate the squad and he might get more minutes against the Dominican Republic, which, you know, again, t- no disrespect, but watch me disrespect you. This should be, you know, a game that they, the U.S. should should take easily. And that's where you rotate your squad. So uh, that's sort of something to watch. That's going to be a continued one to watch Julian Araujo there, but also Sebastian Legette and going and, and coming back and, and how that is. I mean, I saw... Um, one of the FC Dallas players was playing in the U23 game, got injured today. So yeah. it, it's those are the things that you should be worried about right now is that everybody goes through and comes through healthy. For Efrain Alvarez, we talked at length about him. Uh, Hammer uh, quietly and, and privately will say that he's tired of talking about a bench player, which I, th- <laughs> I think is, I, well, by the way, I, I'm in agreement. Until now. 
I, yeah, I was going to say, I, I agree with that, though. So um, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen for Efrain Alvarez to be a part, a, an integral part or an important part of this LA Galaxy team. We have not seen that. This is his year. Uh, he's also going to be gone with some national team call-ups. Ho I think hopefully for him, not just these couple of national team call-ups, just these two games, um, but more in the future. And so, you know, that has to be a development for him. Yeah, and, and we've covered that. It, it goes with, you know, being in the different camps and playing with different players and picking up new tools for the tool chest. And this international friendly break, the reason why it, it's fine right now is because the season hasn't started. Those games are happening uh, into March and the season still is, you know, about a month away. So this is the time to let them go and, and while they're in form and to, to keep things going. So absolutely, you know, this is this is fine that they're gone at this time. You you want them back when the season starts and have everything, have them flying high and ready to go. So getting that extra competition, I think, is a good thing. Getting a competitive match uh, when the Galaxy are just in preseason and training. I, I think this it's nothing but a good thing. Uh, All right. For these who are gone. Yeah, yeah, no, I I think it is. Um, by the way, Robert is in the chat room trying to get everybody to like the video. So um I'll do my best. Uh YouTube version is smash that like button. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh thanks, Robert. We appreciate that as well. Uh LA Galaxy announced some season ticket stuff today. If you were a season ticket member, you probably got an email today. Um, I know because all of you emailed me your emails almost immediately, <laughs> or you sent them to me on Twitter, or we got them in the Discord, or a whole bunch of other things, which by the way, I love. Um yeah. it used you got to be you got to see everyone's balance. Yeah, I got to see everybody's balance. No, everybody was hiding that um, <laughs> as as it goes along. It, I, I used to, whenever I started this, I had to do everything myself, right? You have to look up everything yourself. You have to do it because, you know, you're nothing. And and I'm not saying I'm anything now, but now that we have great listeners, and pe I always know what's going on because somebody will send me something and be like, hey, did you see this? 92% of the time I've seen it. Usually I see it before most people see it. Um, but there are a couple of people who get the jump on me every once in a while if I'm busy doing, you know, my real job and stuff like that. Um, every once in a while I have to actually do that. Otherwise, uh, otherwise I'll get fired. That's that. I think that's how it works. Um, <laughs> otherwise so, you become a professional podcaster, which is, that's, isn't, that's really not a good thing. It's not truly the goal. <laughs> no, no. My, my wife would be very disappointed in that choice of career. Um, so anyway, uh, but season ticket members come out. Uh, the, the emails came out to, to let you know how they were going to do it. Now, if you remember on Monday, I told you that the LA Galaxy were going to prioritize premium season ticket holders. So in this email, they tell you they're going to prioritize premium season ticket holders. Uh, then it goes to people who have been after premium, it goes to full season ticket members. Um, and then it goes to like partial plans um, after that. So it sort of fits in there. I would imagine... Eric, that there are little levels inside of those too. I imagine that there are, you know, full season ticket memberships in terms of the people who sit in the expensive seats, you know, yeah, over well, here. Just and, say it. Yeah, I'm going to say you no, just I have mean, to say it. However that, much you pay per ticket, that's that, how much you're going to be the priority. So the more you pay, the you're going to be the front closer to the front of that line. The the premium people who spend a boatload by the way for some of those tickets because they get a lot of things which is stuff like going to the um the champions lounge right and being part of that and being able to walk down on the field and being able to do all that stuff that's all a premium ticket and so they're not going to get that this year as a matter of fact as we told you on monday they're going to end up discounting those tickets for them because they're not getting everything that they're supposed to be getting um and the same by the way goes for everybody else you're not getting everything you're supposed to be getting food and beverage options i think are going to be severe Really limited, so that's going to be an issue. You're going to, you know, you're probably not going to be able to sit in your seats. Um, that should be almost a foregone conclusion because they have to spread everybody out. Depends on how it goes. Here is the good news because this is obviously, and I don't think anybody's surprised by it, um, that they're going to prioritize sort of in that way. Um, I, it's interesting to see sort of how the season, how the supporters groups fit into this and how they sort of that move them. Yeah, and sure, I don't know that answer, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't get a chance. These these emails came out this afternoon. Um, so I haven't really got a chance to talk to the galaxy or figure out how all that works. And even then that's like a totally different department than PR whenever you yeah. get to it. So I have to go through them in order to get somebody else. And that always is, is a little bit of a, of a difficult or can be a difficult thing. It's just more people to talk to. So, um, that type of thing, however that works and however it ends up, there's going to be a limited number of tickets. And basically if you do season ticket, you know, total season ticket members that there are, and then people who actually want to go, um, you know, the, the different, 
uh, levels that we put out, and and we've uh, sort of been quoting these numbers because these numbers come from the LA Galaxy in terms of what their capacity sellout crowd is or their overcapacity sellout crowd. So the 26,674 is the number we think they're going to go to. And right now in the red tier, it's 5,300, just shy of 5,400. Uh, people, Eric. And so when you look at that and say, okay, there's 5,400 people, that seems like there's, there, even with people who aren't going to show up, everybody that wants to go for season ticket members, there's probably not enough tickets for everybody. So you're going to yeah. get left out. Yeah. That, that's, and that's why the supporters group thing is interesting uh, on how they're going to work that out because, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a double edged sword here because it's almost like those are the fans that you know you went in there making the ruckus causing the atmosphere but at the same time you have your premium seat holders who are actually dropping the serious cash and you want to value them as well so it's it's difficult on on how they handle this but you're right with 5000 uh being the attendance i imagine that everyone who wants to go as a season ticket member and especially with things you know in the red tier now and you know likely you know, that number even improving with vaccinations and right. and, and the virus kind of dying off a little bit here or closer to dying off, you know, that's, that's my increase. And so uh, you're right. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to work this. I, I think that you're not guaranteed to see if you're a season ticket member, you're not guaranteed to get in the state in the stadium. And that's something that they mentioned uh, in that email is that you, there's a chance that you, you are not going to be able to go to any LA Galaxy game or, or all Galaxy games, uh, but they're going to try to do it based on tenure. They did mention that. So it all depends on how they, how do they identify priority as oh, well? Is it, that just one tier or is, are they going with priority based on price? There's a lot of different ways that they so, can kind of dance around this and be creative. Uh, and then the last thing that I will say with the supporters, uh, if you do want to try to let them in or, or try to work something out so you get those supporters group in their sections or something like that, there's also the optics piece of it. You know, you're, uh, you know, trying to social distance, trying to show that this is, a, you know, you're opening sports, this is a safe thing to do. But if you're letting in large groups of supporters and they're grouping together and it's not, it might not be a good look. So maybe you're not going to be able to get that atmosphere anyway. So maybe uh, they don't get the priority, which is unfortunate for those uh, some of those supporters who truly go the hardest for the club. Well, there, there is a little bit of good news, and then we'll we'll dive back into the season ticket things. There is a prediction as of right now that possibly by the time the first game comes around in April, that the that uh, LA County will actually be in the orange tier, which would be in yeah. 8,800 tickets, um, which might be enough to get most of the season ticket members who wanted to be there in. Um, I think there's a much better chance at 8,800, uh, than there is at 5,335, right? So, uh, there's still those chances there. Here's the thing though. These are also, these tickets are basically being purchased and you're purchasing yeah. them with the credit that you have accrued by paying and not getting anything for last season, right? So that's how you're doing it. But the other part, the, the weird thing, certainly to their advantage, obviously always is, uh, <laughs> is that this is being done outside of the season ticket member agreement. So there is no... STA or STM season ticket member STMA. Um, there's no agreement in place for this. These are outside of that. Um, and that's as, as I was talking to one friend, you know, it was like, well, it's always in their favor. Like big surprise. Whenever I want it, whenever yeah. I wanted to cancel things because no, we had to do contract. it according to yeah. the agreement and the contract is so, listen, that's how those season ticket contracts are written. Yeah. If you haven't figured that out, you are, you know, you're a lamb to the slaughter. All right. You, you all, everything is tilted. They're basically the casino and you're just the poor guy who's out there betting it all on stuff. And, you know, every once in a while you win a little bit of something and you feel good about yourself, but the house is always going to win. The end of um, the day for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I don't even know if they should be criticized for it, but it's happening outside of the season ticket member agreement. So, um, you know, keep all that in mind. It's not going to be perfect. I know that there are plenty of season ticket members who don't want to go back and who yeah. will not be exercising. So maybe this is a moot point. Maybe there are going to be plenty of seats for everybody who wants to go back initially. And as confidence increases and the vaccinations increase and the safety level and the more people can get in there, maybe it just always rises and it's not an issue. Um, yeah. I still think there's probably going to be an issue for the first couple of games, um, at yeah. least depending on if they get to that orange tier um, or, or not. Yeah, I think for for the first couple games for sure, it, it's been over a year. P, the people who want to get out are chomping at the bit to get out, and they really want to get in there. And so I think there's the demand is going to be there, especially for those first couple games. And so it's going to be harder uh, to get a ticket for sure. But I, there's also the school of thought, like you mentioned, uh, that why am I going to dip into this credit when it can just roll over if I'm not going to be affected? And then 2022, when things are going to be super, super clear, then I'm good, I'm paid for, I'm done. 
that I was paying, I was paying during the pandemic. And then now I, I get to enjoy a, f- a full season, no restrictions, everyone in there slobbering, hugging, kissing, uh, you know, doing the whole thing. Uh, what, what kind and, of games and, are you owing to? <laughs> I don't know how you express. I've I've been to the speakeasy. That's how that's how it goes down in there. <laughs> I, I I remember that. That was a good deal. A lot, can, a lot of mezcal. Can we get a sponsorship like that again? Can we do that? <laughs> I like alcohol. I would just like to point that out. Of course, kids drink it in moderation. That's always yeah. The be case. responsible. Of and course, twenty one and over only. Um, yes, all those things are are, are goes without saying. Yeah, go. I'll, well, it doesn't because I said it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> disclaimer goes without saying, but we need to say it anyway. We're we're gonna say it anyway. Um, but no. So, I mean, that's what's coming down for, for you, for the season ticket members. You have to just understand that. I don't know that a lottery would have been any fair. I mean, it would have been. No, I mean, let's be honest. If it's just random number and they're just going to, they keep going and they rotate. But how do you do that in a shorter period of time? And I but then know. you risk upsetting, you know, Mr. Premium. You know, person I pay five grand a season uh, to sit and I didn't get a crack at the lottery. I'm, I'm canceling my tickets to make someone who I'm just going to say someone who pays $400 a year right. to make them happy. You know, so at, at some point it, that, it's, it's business. That's why I almost wonder if you do it by section and it's a lottery within your section type of thing, yeah. because then the premium, listen, we have premium season ticket members as listeners. I have met them. They are wonderful people. Um, so because a lot of those are held by corporations, but the people I know are actual people who love the LA Galaxy and who bleed it just as much as the people in the supporters group. Just supporters group isn't their bag, and they like going to the Champions Lounge and drinking a little Chardonnay, um, you know, before and after the game. Nothing wrong with that. I I I, I give a little salute on that one, and I see a yeah. whole bunch of them whenever we go and walk from the locker room back and and, and the whole deal. So, um, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Pam's in the chat room as well. She was going to say uh, the mezcal hits different at the digs. It does. It's got a little spice to it. I don't know. Not that I would know because I wouldn't do that. Smokiness. While there's I was a smokiness to it. There's a smokiness. That's what it is. I've been told. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a little chicharito just sprinkled over top of it. That's what that is. So, uh, all right. So that's where we sit with season ticket members. Is there anything else that we have missed? Because I feel like we've covered most of the stuff yeah we went over i've I, you know I've, I've missed the show i don't mind going over this was fun packed show plenty to talk about i think it was all relevant so you it, know, it, i'm it's, good i'm happy i'm happy with what we've done here today it's better than monday where i was like i have two things to talk about so um those are always fun shows as well because then you just get to hear me ramble on so um no that's where we sort of sit there's lots of stuff going on i imagine you're going to get more updates about season ticket member stuff as it comes closer uh la galaxy and the preseason schedule starts to ramp up the official preseason schedule starts on saturday as the la galaxy host host landon donovan's um san diego loyal that game is at dignity health sports park it's being played at 12 p.m pacific time it's close to the media it's not being broadcast it's closed door you're not going to see much from that hopefully the la galaxy have some video from that because because it's officially announced, I would expect some sort of highlights package or something like that to sort of happen. We don't even know the format for that um, in terms of how it goes. The first game you'll get to watch, though, Saturday, March 27th, the New England Revolution um, take on the LA Galaxy at Dignity Health Sports Park. That game is on Spectrum Sportsnet broadcast. You can watch it. There you go. Wednesday, March 31st, 7 p.m. Pacific time, New England. Uh, again, Bruce Arena returns there. Bruce Arena, AJ De La Garza on LAGalaxy.com. They're... There have been some preseason games that have been streamed. They have not been geo-blocked so far. We will see if that happens. So if you're listening to us from outside of uh, of Southern California, we'll see if LAGalaxy.com geo-blocks their, uh, their stream. And then uh, Saturday, April 3rd, the LA Galaxy head to uh, Tucson. Um, horrible place, Tucson. <laughs> um <laughs> Arizona, your Arizona is showing. Yeah, I was going to say my Arizona State is 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 right there. Um, but anyway, uh, Tucson, you could go see the LA Galaxy play. We'll have some ticket information as I get that. I contacted uh, the media personnel over at the uh, the Sun Cup there, um, and they're going to give me more information on that. So I'll share that. I know there's stuff rotating out there. I just want to hear it, and then I will report what I see. So that way you guys can have that. Um, no stream on that Saturday, April third against Sporting Kansas City. Uh, that's t- uh, to be determined right now. And then 3 p.m. on April 7th, which is a Wednesday, Colorado Rapids. That's to be determined if they're going to broadcast that or not. And then Saturday, April 10th uh, against Real Salt Lake, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And that's LAGalaxy.com. We'll have that stream there. So that's your preseason schedule that definitely kicks off starting this Saturday. So we are we are here in terms of making it to the part. The other part, by the way, and let's let's just talk about this just for a second <laughs> let's keep going keep it going why not i'm not the tape keep going we're doing it live um <laughs> is that the la galaxy are playing one two three four five six seven preseason games and they played 
four last year is that yeah that's safe was it four that ended was, up in it was like three real ones and then the, the closed door right two, maybe five maybe five but i think with the roster that you see you're going to see a lot of rotation and, yeah. and you saw it with the pictures uh from the the first scrimmage against the crew a lot of those youngsters were out on the field i think you're going to see a lot of rotation yeah i, I believe so so uh, which is I, a good thing yeah, and you're going to get to see some. I mean, Saturday, March 27th, all of your your needs and desires will be met with watching the LA Galaxy play against New England Revolution. It'll be. I mean, I would suggest you get your beer ready, um, you know, and that you you enjoy what is the start of another season. Having been, this is my 13th season covering the LA Galaxy. Uh, 13 seasons of Corner of the Galaxy since we started way back in 2009. Um, I will say that it it doesn't get any less exciting every year and i'm ex i'm excited that there's going to be live soccer i'm excited that i get to watch live soccer i'm very i'm excited for the fans that you might get a chance very soon to be back in the stadium that's that's super cool i'm i'm yeah. very 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 excited yes feel the berm has saved the show we did not talk about christian pavone <laughs> we get to keep going just when was, you thought this show was over we get to keep going yes they sir. pull us back in and, and again i i could have gone without talking about pavone <laughs> No, just with how things are going, but you're right. It does need to be addressed. This is, this is important. Um, Roger Gonzalez, uh, CBS sports came out with a report says that he had heard that, uh, or he had been told that the LA galaxy and Boca juniors have reached an agreement or were very close to reaching an agreement. Um, and that basically everything is waiting on the situation with, with Pavone's legal, um, worries uh not even worries but you know very serious allegations yeah. um the sexual assault and rape allegations so um he's due in court i think on tuesday march 23rd i think it's tuesday uh we might not we might know more greg vanny in his press conference sort of said and he didn't mean to put a timeline on it but he did put a timeline and he goes you know we're gonna have to make a decision eventually somebody asked yeah. him it's like at one point do you walk away and vanny goes I mean, we can go either direction where we'll be fine if we want to bring, if we can bring in Christian Pavone and everything's fine and that'll be, and we'll, we'll work it that way. Um, or, uh, we will, or we can move on and find somebody else. Either way, all options are open. And within the next few weeks, we should have that understanding. Yeah. I think they're hoping something definitive comes out on Tuesday. Um, yeah. let me, let me, let me tell you this part too. Everything that Roger Gonzalez got told, uh, reported is what I heard. Um, yeah. and and by the way, on Monday, I said, it feels like the LA Galaxy are finally stepping a little bit away or distancing themselves from the Pavone thing. And then this report comes out. Lots of people said, well, you said, I, I'm still, I'm right. And yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why I'm right. Um, <laughs> which, which is always nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm right because the LA Galaxy are looking at this as in they're ready to walk away if this does not go in their direction. And that point is coming. If they get a clean break and it has to be something clean, it has to be not guilty. It has to be charges, you know, charges or accusations dismissed. I don't want to like use our legal terms for theirs because they're yeah. not the same. Um, but when you look at that, the LA Galaxy will make the deal if Pavone can be if Pavone is found not guilty or the charges are dismissed or it goes away in an amicable way in which they can, from the PR perspective, sort of say, okay, he's clean and we can move on and, and move away. If that happens, this deal happens and it's done and he's coming to the LA Galaxy. And I think the Galaxy were ready to make this announcement right before he got surgery. And, you know, the allegations came against him after these negotiations yeah. have been going on for a long time. So that's what I have, which, Eric. It's, it's the good news and the bad news. The good news is, we're not dealing with the saga of can they get a deal? Can they negotiate? What's the going back and forth? What's the price? It seems like it, the, whatever negotiation about the you know the soccer side of it is done, and you know the Galaxy are ready to pull the trigger if necessary, and Boca is ready to accept whatever those terms are. But unfortunately, just like in true Pavone news fashion, there's always another twist, always another bit, bit of drama, and obviously this is a serious allegation, and the Galaxy. You know, you can go either way. You could say this is a serious allegation. Time to walk away, and I think we've said that. But at the same time, if if they are believing in their player and trusting in their player, let's let's wait till what what the final verdict is, or at least uh, it, maybe there's not going to be a final verdict, but they'll know. Okay, things are going to be extended. He's going to need to remain in Argentina longer, and then at that point, you say, well, we can't we can't keep doing this. We have to start our season. Or you say, you know, things are dismissed to a certain degree. Maybe there's still. So a case hanging over his head, but he's they allow travel or whatever it is, and they're able to make that deal uh, and deal with it later. But I think one way or another, I think next week, once 
once more information is shared out, I think the, we'll we'll know next week which direction it's going. So there, there's a certain time where you have to you have to make a call, and whether people are happy or not happy about it, you have to you have to choose a direction and start moving in that direction. And I think we're we're very close to that timeline. It, it was said in the Discord, and I will re I will reaffirm that uh, you do not need to pick sides on this. Right? There's no there's no need for you to pick sides. In fact, if you're picking sides and you're going on Twitter picking sides, I would suggest that you just calm down and wait and see how yeah. things get played out. Um, I'm generally in the position that I believe people whenever they make these accusations, and so I will allow this to play out, and whenever this plays out, we will come in and we will tell you what happens, and we've really been trying to stick to as much of the facts of the case in terms of what we actually know to be true, and right now, none of their all the accusations and everything are sort of they're in this limbo land um mm. and hopefully that gets cemented here on the 23rd so that way everybody can understand which sides of the story what's going on and uh, i was talking to john rojas um who has been all over this good buddy john rojas and john was telling me that, that it's very likely that pavone's uh you know legal team will, pre will present evidence on this on this court hearing and you'll get to hear his side of it um in terms of how it all goes in so that's all there the LA Galaxy, I can't say this, but I, it's it's like I don't want to be definitive about this, but they're very aware that signing somebody who would be who would have this hanging over his head and possibly being a negative, they they know they can't do it. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't seem that it's gonna be it's gonna happen. What's gonna happen is if there's a clean resolution, if there's a green light for them, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna sign them. Uh, if there's not, they're not, and that seems pretty obvious from everybody that I've talked to. But the deal is done. This is what's waiting. This is the pending stuff. Pavone's going to get his day in court. Um, his accuser will get her day in court as well. Uh, and then we will go. I, I'm hopeful there's a resolution. I don't believe there's going to be. I feel like it's going to get dragged out um, because it's court. I, even yeah. here in the United States, you don't get like a decision. Yeah. So, And what, what I mean, it's not going to be clean cut. It's all done next week. But I think whatever the next steps from next week are will tell you the direction that it's moving in. And it's, I think that's, that's where you're able to make the move. Yeah, it seems to. Uh, so far, it's been mostly negative every time these things have gone. It's gotten worse and worse for Christian yeah, Pavone that's true every too. step. So um, I wouldn't, it would have to be a real swing in order for things to go his way because they haven't so far. Uh, really interesting in terms of just the negotiation and understanding where the LA Galaxy are coming from and where Boca is coming from to Christian Pavone. Uh, I'm still convinced that people within the LA Galaxy are 100% convinced of his um, innocence, but that, you know, un you don't get to make a gamble like that and keep your job. So people aren't going to make that decision and they're going to wait for this to all sort of get cleared up. So, uh, justice is justice. We'll see if it all gets played in through. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can happen in Argentina. So we'll try to keep you updated on it. And, uh, if it gets really complicated because it has a tendency that it could, uh, we'll get John Rojas on the show as well. Uh, cause John, John's a friend of mine. I can, I can He's make that pro. happen. So, um, by the way, Greg, Greg, I love it. Greg Vanny in the chat room, not the real Greg <laughs> Vanny. Um, our very fake Greg Vanny, who's in our uh, discord as well, said uh, a one hour and 35 minute show. So that's the longest one you've ever done. No, it's not the longest one. Show number 700. Go, go 700. see that one. I think that was 200, was two hours. One. Yeah, that was a special one. There's still confetti. a lot of interviews too. There, there's still confetti. <laughs> You're still con yeah. confetti's at your house, even though it was at the studio. That's impressive. Yeah, I moved it. I'm here. proud of that. I moved it here. Um, so that's what it is. All right. I think that's it. Eric, anything that's else it. you want to get to or, you're, or no, for real, we're done. No, let, let's, let's for real. Let's close this puppy out. All right, go ahead. Tell people where they can find you. All right. As always, you can find me on Twitter at hammer EV, but also follow me on Instagram at galaxy profile. That's galaxy P R O F O U. All right. And if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at J Gessman, J G U E S M A N. And of course at galaxy podcast, head on over corner of the galaxy.com podcasts, articles, videos, all that stuff, cornerofthegalaxy.com. Larry has a great one for you, a uh, great article right now, so make sure you head over there, cornerofthegalaxy.com. All right, for Eric the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. LA Galaxy preseason is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone have a great night. We will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.